How's it going guys? Have you heard about the new Rotobrush 3 in After Effects beta? In the past tutorial, I gave you a brief introduction to Rotobrush 3, but in this video, I'm actually gonna put it up against its competitors. I'm talking about a real showdown. We're gonna take two clips and we're gonna do a real comparison, cutting out the main subject in Rotobrush 1, Rotobrush 2, and Rotobrush 3. This is definitely gonna be fascinating to see. By the way, if diving into After Effects is a tad intimidating to you, which it shouldn't be, I've got something that just might interest you. Think of it as a quick and easy VFX hack or trick that you can do right in Premiere Pro without even having to touch After Effects. It's called ePRISM, and this pack offers a collection of digital lens distortions that mimic high quality prism lens filters. Both volumes one and volumes two give you access to over 20 filters. And trust me when I say that these beautiful effects will change your life. They are so easy to use. You can do them right in Premiere Pro. You can apply them with literally two clicks. Check them out in the description below. But for now, let's continue to journey into the world of Rotobrush 3. We are now in After Effects beta, and the first clip that we're going to look at is this clip of this girl dancing. We're going to now try cutting her out with the infamously bad Rotobrush 1. We're going to see how well it does. First things first, click on the Rotobrush tool, and then we're going to double click on the composition window so that we go to the layer window, and then we're going to start drawing on her body. We're going to then go to Rotobrush, and we're going to make sure that the version is on 1.0, classic. We're then gonna finish drawing over her body. Basically how Rotobrush works is you draw on one frame and you are attempting to just get her within this outline. If the outline strays outside of her limits of her body, then you hold down Alt and then the Rotobrush tool turns red and it deletes what it did before. Now that we have Rotobrushed her for the entire first frame, we're going to preview the rotor brush effect and see how well it takes for all of the other frames. We're now going to click the freeze button. We're now going to click back onto the composition window and see how it looks. Yes, this is a horrible rotoscope and it just goes to show how bad rotor brush 1.0 was when it first came out and still is. If you go back to the layer window, you can actually see how bad the rotoscope mask is just breaking up as the footage progresses. All right, next thing that we're gonna try is Rotobrush 2. Make sure that you're in the composition window and make sure that the Rotobrush tool is clicked. Now I'm gonna double click on the composition window to automatically go to my layer window and I'm gonna draw on her body one more time. I'm gonna make sure that I am in version two now and I'm gonna make sure that the quality is on best. Now I'm gonna draw on the first frame of her body one more time, just like last time. I'm gonna to try to be as accurate as possible, making sure that my mask is as perfect as it is for this first frame, which elevates its chance of sticking the entire time throughout the entire clip to her body. Alrighty, now I'm going to preview it and play through it. All right, we're gonna go back to the composition window and I'm gonna check out how this took. All right, Rotobrush 2 definitely worked a lot better. The mask kind of unhooked itself near the very end but I am pretty impressed. With a little bit of tweaking in future frames, I could have perfected this sequence completely. All right, lastly guys, we're gonna try Rotobrush 3. And I'm gonna draw on her body once more. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in version three, which I am. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. Draw over that first frame, just on her body. We're gonna try to be as accurate as possible. All right, this looks like it did a lot better. We're gonna now check it out in the composition window. I am very impressed, a whole world of a difference. I'd like to remind you guys as well that I only edited the first frame. Usually when I'm in a professional project, I'm gonna go to a couple frames and correct the rotor brush as it strays as the clip continues on. I did not have to do that at all. I say the only thing I would do if I had a little bit more time is I'd maybe go in here and correct the where it kind of messes up in between her legs a little bit and then I'd go and I'd use their fine edge tool on her hair just to soften up the edge on her hair. But I am very, very, very impressed overall. Hey you. Oh, hey. Hey. Yes, you, I'm talking to you on the other side of the screen. You've made it to the point of the video that lets the YouTube algorithm know that this video needs to be shared with people like yourself. This video may not go viral, but if it does, you are part of the reason why. So thank you for helping this video get more views. As I thank you to you, if you click on the link below, I'm gonna give you my total collection. That's a massive product bundle that I'm selling for only $59. I know what you're probably thinking, that's a massive savings, and you're right. 
but that's how much I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch our content and helping it go viral. The Total Collection has all of our community favorites in it, including E-Prism Volumes 1 and Volumes 2, cinematic titles, our transition packs, and so much more. In total, there are over 20 packs in there. Just click the link to learn more because I want to get back to the video. All right, guys, this one's going to be even crazier. We're going to actually try to cut out this guy while he's riding a bike. This seems almost impossible. We're going to start out with Roto Brush 1. All right, I've done my Roto Brush on my first frame. I'm going to click Preview and see how badly this goes. Because as we know, Roto Brush 1.0 does not have the best reputation. Now we're going to make sure to click Freeze. All right, we're going to preview it, see how well Roto Brush 1 takes on this clip. It doesn't start too well, but overall, it's what we expected. We're now going to try out Roto Brush 2, and I'm going to start drawing again on the first frame. Alrighty, now I'm going to preview it and play through it. Now we're going to click Freeze. Now we're going to go back to our composition window and review how it looks. I'll be honest, Roto Brush 2 is actually behaving worse than Roto Brush 1, which is a big surprise. It started off kind of working near the front of the clip, and as the clip began to progress and pan up, the entire body of the rider is cut off. I will admit this is a very hard clip to do, but what I'm actually really interested in is how Roto Brush 3 is going to perform. We're going to make sure that we are in version 3, and we're going to start drawing. I'm now going to preview this. I'm now going to click Freeze. All right, Roto Brush 3 definitely performed better than Roto Brush 1 and Roto Brush 2. I will say that I actually tested Roto Brush 3 out on this clip yesterday, and in my opinion, I think it did even better than we're seeing right now. You can see that the water bottle is kind of getting clipped a little bit, but for the sake of honesty and transparency, I wanted to show this clip. The last use of Roto Brush 3 that I did on this bike clip. Overall, I assume this could be fixed if I just did a few extra adjustments. As a reminder, as the main rule for this test, I only wanted to apply Roto Brush to the first frame and I wanted to see how well it would do. And yet again, this is probably the most complex and confusing clip that I could have chosen. Overall, I would say great job to the Adobe team. Roto Brush 3 is performing relatively well. So what are my closing thoughts? I think Roto Brush 3 will be an amazing addition to your creative toolkit. I'm very impressed at how intelligent it has become and I cannot wait for future versions to literally get us to the point where rotoscoping and masking things out isn't even a part of a workflow that we even have to think about anymore. And with the continued advancement of AI technology, I feel like we're going to get close to that point very soon.